Hey guys, Troy Francis here. Why do women fall in love with their friends with benefits? That is the question for today. But firstly, let me just inform you that I am in Miami, Florida. We're walking down Ocean Drive. And uh, the place I first came to in 1999, actually, and I went to Wet Willys, which is amazingly is still there. And I had a cocktail called Call a Cab, which amazingly is still available in Wet Willys. And um, it kind of did what it said on the tin. I had, to, uh, I had to call a cab. So there you go. That was back in the more debauched days. But anyway, here we are. And uh, yeah, so why do women fall in love with their friends with benefits? Okay, so look, there's this category of relationship. And actually, um, in the mentorship program that I now run for a select number of students each quarter called the Social Attraction System, um, we go into depth about all these different types of relationships, but there's a category of relationship and it is uh, friends with benefits. And what does that mean? Well, what it means really is that you have met or you are engaging with a, a woman and you're engaging with a woman and you guys are sleeping together, but there is nothing more to it than that in theory, okay, theoretically. Um, and this can, at the beginning, seem to be a very good solution for both the guy and the girl because you get to have the sex, you know, the enjoyment of the sex, uh, the physical pleasure, and so on, and, uh, you know, a little bit of the closeness and whatever, a bit of fun, fun times, whatever, but there is no uh, emotional investment as such or well, that's the that's the theory anyway um, in practice does it really work well I'm not convinced that it really does or at least not for long periods of time anyway I mean you can keep it sort of spinning for a reasonable amount of time like a few months maybe even up to a year maybe but at some point at some point in that uh, re relationship that friends with benefits relationship the truth of the matter is that one or the other parties is going to become emotionally invested and more often than not it's the woman but you know it's not always it could be the guy uh, who gets emotionally invested but at some point one of the two parties is going to get emotionally invested why is that well it's simple chemistry in it it's biology it's all that science stuff you know because the oxytocin that is released when you guys are making sweet love and then you're kind of cuddling together afterwards or whatever, that oxytocin that gets released becomes addictive and you become bonded to the person. I don't think there's any such thing as sex where if you do it enough times with the same person that there isn't a, a degree of bonding that takes place. I, I'm not convinced that it's, that's actually possible, okay? Um, and so as a consequence, often you'll get this situation where the woman falls in love with her friend, friend with benefit, or the, you know, the guy falls in love, or both, you know, and then they become a beautiful couple and everyone happy, lives happily ever after. And yeah, it happens a lot. And I think the lesson to take from this really is that the manner in which you start a relationship, regardless of what you want, you know, regardless of whether you want to become a couple and you want to be in a serious relationship and live together and get married and all that good stuff. Here we go. This is where Willie's now, I think, coming up. There we go. Well famous. Um, yeah, I mean, I think whether you want something that's very casual and non-committal or whether you're looking for something that's actually more serious, the manner in which the relationship starts is, is always pretty much the same. It has to be predicated on attraction. In other words, you have to be attracted to her and she has to be attracted to you, okay? And that's really all it is. So guys will often make the mistake of thinking, well, because I'm now looking for something more serious, I'm looking for something long term, I have to, my approach, and I mean the, you know, the approach to the, the early courtship phase, my approach has to be different because this is different, this is serious, this is, um, you know, we're, not, we're putting aside childish things now. This isn't just about hookup culture, this is about, you know, forging a lasting and deep relationship 
based on love and trust and all of that. Um, and they think that they need to do something radically different at the beginning in order to make that happen. And the reality is that they don't because the, the glue or the foundation, it's a mixed metaphor there, but you know, the, 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 the initial thing has to be, has to be the attraction between the two, okay? And then everything else grows from that. So attraction is required if it's gonna be a one night stand or if it's gonna be, you know, a casual thing or friends with benefits. But equally, that is also how a longer term, more committed relationship begins as well. You can't get around the attraction side of things, you know, not if that you want this to be a proper reciprocal relationship, okay? Um, the attraction has to be there. So you need to do things in the early stages that are going to uh, ignite her attraction for you, okay? You can't just be her friend for seven weeks and hope that somehow then she's gonna become your girlfriend. That's not gonna work out. You need to flick those attraction switches at the beginning. Um, and then, after you guys have got closer, maybe you've been intimate, whatever. Silly old reggaeton. Um, after you guys have got closer and maybe been intimate, you can then make the decision, okay, so where's this going? What, how, how do we want this to be? Is this going to be just a casual thing? Or is it gonna be more serious? And uh, what I would counsel you to do is to... Oh yeah. What I would counsel you to do is uh, to allow things to move forward organically for a period of time and kind of see see where you uh, see see where it goes um, and also just observe her behavior as well because if she's into you then she's going to start to make moves to not lock you down exactly but she's going to make moves to make this thing more concrete and um, if she doesn't do that and she's going to the club every night or whatever then she probably isn't taking this thing actually that seriously, so you might be best advised to, you know, to look elsewhere. Um, but, you know, if you guys seem to be moving in the same direction together, then you could just up the ante in terms of, okay, so we're gonna be, you know, start going on more proper dates, start spending a bit more time together, go for breakfast together, lunch, whatever it is, and uh, just allow the closest to increase in that way. Okay, but it has to start with the attraction. If it doesn't start with attraction, then you're really on a hiding to nothing. And with that, from South Beach, Miami, I will say goodbye. But if you want to discuss your, your dating life, your dating opportunities with me, then you can absolutely do that. Uh, drop me an email, Troy at realtroyfrancis.com or click the calendar link below. Please uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, drop me a comment underneath and support the channel also on Patreon. We're not monetized, so it really, really helps out. Uh, hit the Patreon link below and it's only $5 per month and you get all of this wonderful content. Plus you get to ask me questions for these videos and as if that wasn't enough, extra exclusive content as well. See you guys again very soon from Miami. Troy Francis, bye-bye.